Antonio Galoni is a renowned wine critic and founder of the wine information and data service Venice Media. He also happens to be a former banker with Deutsche Bank. So you know a few things about business and finance. Antonio, welcome. Great to have you back. We thought people Thanks. just drank wine because they lost so much in the <laughs> Well, you know, even through 08 and 09, uh, the actually consumption of wine in this country was Continue strong. It's just people traded down. Yeah. But uh, the, the top line number was strong. So it just tells you a little bit about, about what wine uh, can do. So let's talk about what's hot and what's not okay. in the world of wine. Sure. Uh, where do you want to start? Well, let's start with what's hot. Let's start okay. with the good stuff, right? Uh, this year, I think the hottest category is, and there's no question, 2010 Brunello di Montalcino. Brunello is, Ameri is a signature Italy, Italian wine. Signature Italian wine, the most loved Italian wine in America. Great vintage, 2010. Uh, the wines are in the market now and have done really well. A okay. lot what of interest. Else? What else is hot? Well, I think Italian wines in general have done very well because of this mood we were talking before about sort of formal dining versus more informal dining. People want to eat healthier. We're in love with the Mediterranean diet. We want a little piece of that more ingredient-driven kind of cooking. And Italian wines as a whole really speak to that quintessential need that people have. And do I think you, do that you feel that group, Stephanie? Well. I definitely do. I think people don't like people don't like to eat in restaurants where they feel like everyone's bill is being paid with a corporate American Express card. They don't like well-lit places. They don't like a sommelier standing over them for a four-hour conversation about what the Oh, about how the oak and the tannin taste in huh. their wine. They want to have a life experience. Or maybe I just do. No, I think your vision is actu actually true. And in fact, most of the wine in this country is purchased by women. So I would say that you probably speak for most of, <laughs> most of the wine consumers in the country. I, I think it's just about a lifestyle vibe that's changing. Don't you think, Eric? People are, nobody's formal anymore. Yeah, so that leads us to, you know, you asked me also what's not hot. Mm -hmm. And one of the areas that I think is struggling right now is Bordeaux. Because there's a there's a disconnect with the end consumer and values that reflect more of a aristocratic, formal, hierarchical way of living that isn't in sync with today's, what you just expressed That's a big better change, than yeah. though, right? Yeah. Because Bordeaux had, what, three vintages of the century in last decade. Well, quite a few, yeah. If you count 2000, 2000, 2005, 2009, 2010, all terrific, but there's a disconnect. You know, you want a story. There's no community vibe. There's exactly. no life experience vibe. Which is sad because those wines are beautiful. They age great. They represent classics. And I think classics never go out of style. But this is a region that has to reconnect with the end consumer if, so that you're more passionate. If we look at the LiveX, right, yeah. this is an invest. This is a, this is a Walk fund. Walk through what that is. It's a fund. Well, you know better than me. Well, fund that invests in, I mean, I guess, wine that functions more as, in theory, right, more as an investment than as a, as yep. a drinkable commodity. Does that explain, does that tell us the story of Bordeaux? Well, I mean, the, you know, the, one of the questions... Because first growth Bordeaux is a big part of the LiveX. That's right. And so one of the questions with, with Bordeaux is that people will look at the current vintage and they will compare to how previous vintages have done. And when the opening price of vintages like 2009 and 2010 is so high that there's no room for anybody else to make a margin, there's only one direction that that's going to go. Well, alternative investments have sort of become chic as people look for different ways to invest their money, as they're searching for yield. Is there a real investment here? I feel like traditionally people would say, well, I'm going to drink it if it doesn't work. Well, you know, wine is like any other investment class. You can do well, but you can also hurt yourself. So you've got to have you know, some professional expertise. It's just like trading stocks or bonds or ETFs or buying real estate. Sure, you may get lucky, but if you really want to invest in wine, you have to be armed with the same kind of tools that any other disciplined investor uses in any other asset class. Then what's the most valuable thing to know right now? About collecting wine? Mm -hmm. You buy whole cases. You never open a bottle of wine because one, if you open a, if you take a 12 bottle case and you open one, you drink one bottle, you've destroyed 50% of, of the value, not one twelfth. Okay, you buy large formats because large formats will diminish in quantity. As, what does a format mean? You know, like a big bottle. So a, a standard bottle is 750. A magnum is 1.5 liters. A double magnum is three liters. If you wanted to invest, you would buy large formats because over time these assets deplete and there's fewer of them over time. You want to keep all your receipts. You want to store your wine professionally, and you want to take into account your holding cost of wine. People don't ever think about Antonio. how much has it cost me to store this wine all these years. Before we have to let you go, I yes. want the top picks. Okay, good. Right? If we're going to have you here at 8:45 in the morning, people got to yeah. walk away with something actionable. Fine, let's do it. Uh, Brunello, 2010. We have right. Il Pogione is a standard go-to wine to buy in every vintage. Mm -hmm. uh, Chachi Piccolomini, which is on the left of the screen here, on the right of the screen here, is another richer, riper style. 
Costanti in the middle is a more of a structured, fresher style. What if, from the what if I like what if I like Napa and I'm looking for value? Well, you know, one of the things about wine that's great is that wine doesn't have to be expensive. So you could look at something like Beringer Knights Valley, which is hmm. showing up here on the left. That's a, a widely available wine in the twenty to twenty-five dollar range. I like I like your middle choice there, Ridge. Okay, what's so some rules about buying wine? Wine doesn't have to be expensive. Okay, so look at the, the appellations that are right next to bigger appellations. So Knights Valley, where that Beringer is from, that is on the border with Napa Valley. That separates Napa from Sonoma. So you go for Knights Valley and Beringer. Ridge is the you know Ridge is known for their Montebello. This is their their junior their junior Montebello, if you want. I, mean, I probably shouldn't say that. So look for the. I said it. Yeah. Okay. Good. Fine. We, look. We, we got to run. Okay. <laughs> Schaefer. Another one. Antonio. Thanks. Eric, Always a pleasure. Thanks for your time. Antonio Galoni, he runs Venice Media. He is a renowned wine critic. Check it out.